Welcome to Central Park. This is Lady Altaviz on behalf of the Memorial Missionary Baptist Church Art Ministry. And we're doing a tribute to the 19th Amendment Ratification 100th year anniversary. So I'm standing in the mall, yes? The famous mall that you saw in movies, Kramer versus Kramer, Big Daddy, and Made in Manhattan. And we're here today talking about a new addition to Central Park because you know New York has 150 statues only five are of women and Central Park has the nerve to have only 23 statues zero are of women well some will say they disagree because you have Mother Goose there's Alice in Wonderland and Juliet of course with her Romeo well they aren't real honey these ladies are real this is the Women's Rights Pioneers statue of Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. They are the pioneers of the Women's Rights Movement. And the sculpturer, her name is Meredith Bergman. And she said she didn't want to create a statue where someone was just standing or someone was just sitting. She wanted them to tell a story. She wanted them to be in action. So here's more information where you can dig a little deeper and hear Paola Davis or Meryl Streep give you their commentary. But you're lucky. You have Lady Alta Vis giving her commentary on behalf of the Arts Ministry at Memorial Baptist Church. So I want you to pay attention to the detail. Notice her hair. Elizabeth Cady Stanton is a lady of means. And you know that because she's wearing her hair in curls. Only ladies of wealth and stature would wear their hair in curls. And notice the ball and the needle on Sojourner's lap. That's for knitting, which is a skill not taught to slaves and other African Americans. And she wanted everyone to know she knew how to knit. This is an occupation for the Civil War. And this is before she gave her speech in Ohio in 1851. Ain't I a woman? And notice the bag there made of alligator skin full of legislative acts and injustices. And these ladies worked together quite often. They would visit each other's houses and sometimes they would have heated arguments. Sometimes they would go over speeches together and they would have this history of supporting each other throughout this movement. But sadly, all of them passed away before August 26, 1920. And that was 100 years ago this year, 2020. And 2020 has been proving itself to be a bit harsh. But this is one good thing that definitely has happened in the year 2020. We have Sojourner Truth, which was a slave at birth. And she, like the 13 other of her siblings, they were sold away from both of her parents. And poor Sojourner at the age of nine she was included with a herd of sheep for $100 at about nine years old. This is around 1807, 1808. And she would not run away. She would walk away because she said running away was sinful. So she believed if she walked away and wasn't stopped, so be it. And that's exactly what she did with her newborn baby. And she ran into the Quakers up here in New York. And the Quakers took her in and gave her shelter and her baby for about a year. Because in 1827, that's when slavery was abolished in the state of New York. And she would have her banner and she would post it and just start singing. And when a crowd would gather around her, that's when she would say, children, I listen to God. And she would also say, God listens to me. So Sojourner Truth was really an amazing woman. And this statue is coming with a little controversy because Susan B. Anthony, she was really good friends with Frederick Douglass. And Frederick Douglass would stomp 
the grounds and be an activist with her for women's rights to vote. Yeah. And then around the time of maybe 1880, she didn't want Frederick Douglass around anymore. She felt as if his presence would deter other Southerners and Ku Klux Klan men that were supporting her in her cause. Well, you know, the 15th Amendment allowed newly freed African slaves, men, not women, men, to vote. And that was problematic for Susan B. Anthony. And she and Frederick Douglass parted ways. But it was sad that when they were about to have a convention in Atlanta, she told Frederick, you're no longer invited. And that was the beginning of the rift between Susan B. Anthony and the 15th Amendment, which will allow black men to have the right to vote. Well, she never was successful in her lifetime, but when women started marching, black women sort of were pushed to the back. And then that's when Susan B. Anthony, I'm sorry, that's when Sojourner Truth and the Negro women, colored women, started their own organization and fought for their right to vote. It wouldn't be until the Voting Rights Act of 1965 where black women would <laughs> be uniformly allowed to vote. You would have black men first, and then 1920, you would have white women, because you would have, if your grandfather was a slave, you couldn't vote. Or the polling tax, if you didn't have the money, you couldn't vote. If you couldn't guess how many pieces of bubble gum was in a machine, you couldn't vote. How many jelly beans in a jar? They would come up with all type of creative ways to keep African Americans from voting, as well as Asians and Native Americans. But Native Americans got their right to vote in the 1920s, and then the Asians in the 1950s, and finally, everyone in the 1960s. So we are here celebrating wonderful, wonderful accomplishment by having this beautiful statue added to Central Park and to New York City's scene. And I have to acknowledge RBG. We sadly lost her just this weekend. And I'll end this with one of her famous quotes. Women belong in all places where decisions are being made. God bless you. Happy 100th anniversary.